I'll start streaming. I'll start streaming. Scream, 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 scream. Screaming. I don't know. There's nothing to show here. That's not good. Wait, that's the wrong. Oh. Are we streaming? It says we're live. Hello. There's no one watching, so it, we can't oh. say hello, people, because no one. There's literally no one watching. That would be a miracle if there was people already watching before we started. Well, Chris is here, so we can say, hey, Chris. sup, Chris, and Caveman's here. We're going to invite the team from the chat. We can't say what team from what chat, but we're going to invite them. I'm trying to log in. What, where would I be if I was wanting to watch this? What's the link? Uh, I shall find you on the Facebook and send you a link. There you go. We are connected. Oh, actually, people can't see you, Andrew. They can't. Oh, no. well, then, can they hear me? Is this a mystery voice? Right now, this is a mystery voice. Uh, any, oh. everyone's, anyone say whether or not they can hear Andrew. Hello, hello, hello. This is Andrew. Quicksilver talking. says, Uruguay sucks. Well, I wouldn't know. But apparently, Quicksilver thinks it does. People are weird, and it is the internet. I've never been. Um... Hey, Fabian, Raphael, people, can you hear the Guitar Geek? I, they can hear I you. Good. Maybe we should fly you in magically. Leslie, do your magic. Fly me in. There you are. Hello. You're even, you're, you're even, even sized, so our heads are kind of... Hey, Leslie, do the thing that we said we would do. I think, I think if I sit like this, that'll work. Go, go ahead. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll do. Listen. And stop. Good. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. That's not what she said, Leslie. Shut up. <laughs> there we... Wait, wait. Yeah, okay, that's that's it. <laughs> Whoa, that's good. And here we... <laughs> that's weird. Wait, I can't, I, can't, I can't drink. Because now that's gone. Oh, you can drink the... Co oh! <laughs> well, let's do this again. And here we go. And... It's weird, I'm drinking coffee. Really hot. Really hot. <laughs> well, really we, hard we, 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 are, we are so easily amused. <laughs> this looks so <laughs> strange. What are people saying? I need a haircut. Way to go, Leslie. Nice comment. What is Leslie saying? What? Wait a second, what is... Leslie's not in this. Hi, Raphael. I can, I can now see the stream as well. Why, why are you still in that position? Why, are you la why was Leslie now laughing? Leslie, what's up just, with you? Just checking out my junk. <laughs> Could you stop? Dude! Stop doing that! Stop doing that! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. Can you put him, put him over there? Put me back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leslie has a new stick to play with. She asked me to have a new stick because she didn't like the old one. So uh, this is actually pretty cool <laughs> because now, now the picture in picture, she has full joystick control over size and uh, position. Okay. Uh, hey, Michelle says hi, Leslie. Oh, I feel sick. Stop moving me around. And now Leslie says, hello, Michiel. You two oh, should get dear. a room. Actually, you shouldn't. Let's move to something. Are we some sort of chat line? Wait, uh, uh, Ryan says, Henning, I didn't know you were ripping the Boss Katana stuff. What do you mean I'm, I'm ripping? Ripping, I think, and I've got one behind me. No, no, he's, he's saying ripping. I don't know what, what uh -huh. he's trying to say. What are you trying to say, Ryan? You mean that I don't I, like it? I don't know. I've never played one. Um, it's going to be a sexual morning, it sounds like. Doggies? No, the doggies are not here. They are over at Leslie's. Don't people have jobs? How, how early is it over in North America? That I always wonder what's going on there. So, uh, now, now people are going bing, and I can't turn that off. Um, I'm going to unbing my phone. So, um, people... This is Andrew. This is Henning. No, no. Th this is Henning. I don't know what's in your corner over there. You pointed in the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm on the other side. 
Look over here. <coughs> no, no. The... Uh -huh. I mean, we, we rehearsed this and everything. It's no, we, we really yeah. didn't. Uh, hey, quick server from Prague. Ever been? Actually, I haven't been to Prague. I have. Prague is wonderful. And uh, Vlad says, well, hello there. Which is a shirt hello. that you can buy. Uh, any review on Spanish guitars from the, for the near future? No. Uh, I've, I've done um, nylon strings from Ortega, but they're really more for the, mo the modern player. Henindrew. Oh, that's Hendrew. Oh, Hendrew. that's that's scary. That the sounds like a place in maybe Czech Republic. <laughs> the Hendrew is scary. Um, yes, Andrew has a katana in the background. P apparently, people want to know what you think about your katana. And they should watch my channel. <laughs> Booyah, as they Boom. say. That's it. Which is why we're here. We're trying to make people understand that Andrew Ferris, the guitar geek, has a pretty awesome channel. He's also one of the funniest bitches that I know. And I don't know if you say that, if that's a thing you say. The, the problem with my lingo is that I just watched an hour and a half of an 83 uh, Eddie Murphy special on Netflix. So <laughs> a lot of this... <laughs> Was I supposed to watch that as well? Did I, did I miss the memo? Tyler Larson just sent me something, and all I wrote back was, dude, that's motherfucking dope, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, uh, oh, sorry, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> it, so, it just seeped into me. When you uh, say Eddie Murphy's uh, special, was it actually Shrek that you were watching? It wasn't Shrek, no. Well, it might, it might, might have been. Um, no, it's actually the 83 stand-up special. Uh, oh, right. ah, I like that one. So, uh, uh, hey, Jason, you don't have to apologize. People bitch about my damn stuff. I'm just thinking. Everyone's like, well, you know, is it still NAM? It's three months now. And I think, well, looking at nice guitars is looking at nice guitars. Would you rather want me to, during NAM or the week after, release 10 videos a day that you simply can't watch? Or have a video a day, even though it might be something that I filmed half a year ago? Actually, uh, Trey Xavier just released a video where a lot of the content was filmed at GitCon. That's even further back. And no one's bitching about that. I mean, sometimes we use stuff we filmed before. And I don't think NAM stuff now is less relevant than it was in February, January, in whenever that was. What do you think, Andrew? I think that apart from this video, everything we've done is in the past. And this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is why you have to watch The Guitar Geek and please subscribe because <laughs> Andrew is freaking brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I was shocked to see that your video was at NAMM. I was watching it. I thought, hang on, where is he? <coughs> but then I thought, oh, it's perfectly, perfectly relevant. I haven't seen this before. Um, that's, what I'm, like, that's what I'm saying. I like the fact that you stole, uh, took stuff. Um, I, I took stuff? Yeah. Are we, are we talking about the same video where you take things from the table? What video is that? It was the one that came up in my, my feed. It was my most recent. I took stuff from the table? I can't remember which, where you were, but you were... I can't remember doing that. Um, well, there you are. There you are. It's in the past. It's in the past. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, Andrew and I, we hung out in Frankfurt, which uh, Glenn calls Shitty Nam. I actually think calling it Shitty Nam is still too good because it literally wasn't anything. And we actually made a funny video together, which is on my camera, which is in the hands of someone that doesn't, shouldn't, you know, have that camera. So uh, one thing I want to say is if you guys haven't seen it, uh, hey, ca uh, wait, Caveman, one second. Um, Thanks to uh, Mark Hawkins and his uh, GoFundMe campaign and a lot of people that said, hey, uh, Henning does cool stuff for us, so let's help him out. Very, very nice of you guys. I was able to rebuy the camera. I bought it as a great import from Hong Kong for less, but I have a new one, which means I can go and do mobile stuff for you again, meaning film at Nam and then bore you with it for three months. Jason! All good. So, camera's back. I'm working on, you know, mics and all that stuff. But uh, I have a feeling that the padding on this is nicer. 
Ja, das mal später. So, um, Andrew shot some cool stuff in Frankfurt. I shot some amazing, actually much more amazing than Andrew's stuff. It was far better. But yeah, it was so much better in uh, Frankfurt. But of course, it's some guy is sitting at home masturbating to that now. Um, so well, uh, I have the other half. There's one video we made together where I was shooting and you accidentally walked into shots. You mean like I did in almost every single job. one of your videos? <laughs> Uh, we so had. A, I, I, so I have the other half. I, I may or may not release that in about eight months when it's not relevant anymore. <laughs> um, we had such a fun time with Max Solo and Glenn Fricker, and we hung out. And, we just, and uh, Robin was there, who is a dragon. That's his name. Um, T Star McMullen, you've been playing. Oh, Jason, the T Star McMullen is brilliant. We'll, we'll show it in a sec. Um, I stole stuff at the Chase Bliss booth. Did I? That's it. Yeah, it was Chase Bliss. What did I steal? Candy or something? A pen, at least. It was, I'm sure there was a pen. Then, the, but then I would have a Chase Bliss pen. You know what's much better to steal than a pen from Chase Bliss? A camera! Oh. Oh. Leslie, uh, get, get two, please. Look, look, look how beautifully that is out of focus. Hey, Leslie, focus that. Come on, because we can do this shit. I'm still seeing up your nose. What? I'm still on this camera. Oh, that's, on, true. Go. that's true. What, Leslie? I can barely hear her. The woman has a the voice of a... What is quiet? The voice of something that's quiet. <laughs> no? No focusing? It's not working? Are you on the right camera? Yeah, I'm looking at the stream and you're holding up a very fuzzy pedal. Well, it, 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 maybe it's a fuzz. There you no, go, I'm... Leslie's on it, Leslie's on it. Here we go, the condo, uh, Le Leslie's on it. Go, 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 there we go, yes. It's the condo. And it's a EQ, but with controllable expression and it's got things on it. And now back to me in fuzzy. This is gonna kill me. Um, so Hold there were for two seconds of focusing. <laughs> there were questions. Uh, am I still selling Merple? It is be it, it technically has sold to someone from Canada, who uh, a week and a half told me he'll pay me in two weeks when his new credit card comes. So it's on hold for that person right now. But yes, I'm still selling Merple because I can't play it in any videos. So what's the point in having an amazing guitar if I'm not gonna use it, even though it's amazing. Will there be a Mayones review this year? Robert, how about you bug Mayones about it? I bugged them about it several times. Write them and say, dude, Henning, go! I can only offer to companies that I do that. Hi, Chris. If that's the Chris that I think it is, then hello again that we've been chatting earlier. Um, all these usernames are freaking me out because I kind of like the names of people that I know. <laughs> and now they're completely Studio Shamil, we know that's uh, that's the Dutch guy. Yeah. Uh, I recognize Quicksilver as well. Who's that? I don't know who is Quicksilver. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We have we have to go to Ryan Davies' question. <clears throat> Let first we get the nice one, which is probably your answer. Helix, XFX, or Camper, and why? Andrew, go. Helix, because I have one. <laughs> that, that's the reason? Uh, okay, no. The, the features um, are, you have one. And if someone buys yeah. one, you can say, that that's what Andrew Ferris says. So, yeah, well, hello. This, you basically just let the cat out of the bag with my review channel there. That's all I do is, is yeah, I've got this. It's really good. <laughs> so, the, I want to no. know if, as in the features, in the catalog from Line 6, it has all the features, and at the end it says, Andrew Ferris has one. <laughs> as, as a feature of the Line 6 Helix. No, I, I chose the Helix because I was going between. I wasn't going for XFX because they're still using the same processor than they were as they were before. Except now they have the three. Yeah, they're using the process. The, anyway, it was Kem Kemper or Helix, and I didn't want to have to get a degree in Kemper to operate a Kemper. You also wanted to be able to talk to me and, you know, survive it. Yeah, I mean. 
I actually think that the Kemper probably gets you better results. But the, the Helix from Line 6 enables me to be more creative because I would get lost in a camper tweaking things and, and changing things that probably wouldn't matter in a mix. There is an element <clears> of that <throat> in the Helix, but for me, it's, it's simpler to use and to help me be a, more of a musician. Okay. Henning, go. Okay. <clears throat> Wait. <clears throat> Helix, love the build quality, absolutely amazing. Brushed aluminum chassis with a beautiful expression pedal and the uh, uh, backlit colored uh, displays on every foot switch, the amazing interface, the beautiful screen on it. Um, it has loops, which means you can actually incorporate your pedals and incorporate them into patches and not incorporate them into patches. It's got extra loud. The feature set on the Helix is brilliant. The price point on the Helix is great. If you're looking for a modeler and only a modeler to play live gigs, cover gigs, whatever, and have pretty good sounds, then the Helix is for you. Is it going to be as good as an actual amp and pedals? No, it ain't, as they say in my hood. Um, it's pretty damn good for what it is, but any amp will kill it. Um, first hour you think, oh my God, it's so good, you don't need an amp anymore, and then you realize, wait a second, it sounds like a modeler. Also, when you're stacking sounds in a recording situation, one guitar, two guitar, three guitar, four guitar, five guitar, six guitar, they all disappear in the mix and they're tough to get out of the mix versus an actual amp. Um, <clears throat> Kemper, I have no experience with. Sounds pretty damn good. I know that tweaking on the Kemper is a problem. I know that the profile, the way it is, is pretty damn good. But as soon as you start to fiddle with the EQ or whatever, it's everyone says that's where it fails. Kemper in terms of effects, definitely not as complex as the Helix. Axe effects, everything I heard sounds brilliant. I know that it's super in-depth. I know that it's pretty much effects-wise. The cat's pajamas, the bee's knees, the awkward's, awkward's knuckles. It's a new thing I just... Dog's bollocks. The dog's bollocks, that's what the British say. In Germany, we say the awkward's knuckles. Okay. No, no, we don't. Um, <clears throat> so... Axe Effects is just ridiculously expensive. Uh, they were ridiculous when they released the three. They sold it for $24.99, which is actually, for what it is, not horrible. But then they had an get to the top of the list price. So for a thousand bucks more, you could get yours earlier. It's a bit naughty, isn't it? It's a bit naughty, as they say. <coughs> so, um... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Kemper for me because you can actually steal amps. It's ethically not cool. Um, sounds good as far as I heard it. Uh, wouldn't want to deal with it because I know the, the people behind it are... They don't give a shit about the you know ethics. Um, I know on the Helix they're at least trying to change the names a bit. It still says Engel with an A. Hmm... Um, it's a pretty good modeler, no more than that. And the Axe Effects pretty damn good, but also shitty expensive. Um, could you get a real amp situation that can get you all that with effects and everything? No. But, realistically, getting this amp can cover everything other than metal, because that's freaking brilliant. Getting that and an aux, okay, we're at... 3300 bucks, and you still don't have a lot of effects other than reverb. Yeah, but that is going to make you happy. Let me ask you this, Andrew. Mm. Is a Helix for you a convenient thing? Um, <clears throat> or is it the solution? Or is it for the price pretty good, but realistically a placeholder for the thing you really desire? feel like you're putting words in my mouth here. I, fe I feel I want to ask you something. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm a dad, and it's something that I can play to my heart's content and as loud as I want with headphones on, uh, and it gets me most of the way there. It is no uh, replacement for an amp, but it does a pretty darn good job, and also it is fun for the first hour, and also if you add in different IRs, and get some bought ones mainly from Celestian and some good ones from Own Hammer as well. 
that changes it a lot. That um, improves the helix considerably. Um, there's a few tweaks you can do on it, but also need to answer the question. I'm still an amp guy. I still need to push some air. You know, I still need, I don't don't feel that as a performer coming through the monitor speakers in the studio. Um, but that would be an ideal sort of, uh, situation. And at the moment, it fits my needs, but it is not <coughs> easily. How's that? Oh my God. Well, now we're getting more people talking to us. Well, Chris has a real question. Favorite, and does, yeah. Favorite Boss Katana amp and why? And then we're going to go to Michelle's question, which is not a real question, even though it says it's a serious question. Okay, my favorite Katana amp is the Artist, which is over there, um, because <clears throat> it does have more features than. No, no, I'm going to go back on that. My favorite Katana amp is the 50, because it's goddamn cheap and you get a hell of a lot of stuff for your money. Um, I think the artist sounds better, but the 50 is so convenient and great for gigs and great for home practice and maybe even get away with it for recording some stuff. Um, I don't think you can beat an amp at that price at the moment. So I'm going to go for the 50. Question over. Uh, Caveman says... Yeah, cave, caveman says... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, amp with a load in an IR. Uh, problem with an IR when it's in software. Uh, for me, I always have to play through the computer and then I've got the latency issue and the computer's got to be on. For me, something like the Torpedo or the, uh, uh, the, the Ox is the way to go. Uh, when you're talking about moving air, I have to admit that the thing that gives me that moving air feeling out of the monitor speakers, the only thing I've ever played, is the Ox. Because it's got that modeled room, which is not a reverb. The torpedo is brilliant. There's no question about it. Um, and for recording, it is absolutely amazing. But when it comes to having that feeling of air in the room, mm -hmm. the ox is the thing that gets me there. Um, so that is a solution if you want to play quietly, but still have the feeling you're actually sitting in front of a cab. Um, now going to Michiel's question, which is a good question. He says, serious question, if you were to share a shower with a fellow YouTuber, who would you prefer it to be? Actually, that should be a question for Leslie, and the only answer can be this guy. Leslie? Nothing. Uh, no comment, she says. Well, if I had to share a shower, share a shower with a fellow YouTuber, you mean like we're in a room? And they use the shower and then I use the shower? Or we're actually in the shower together? Bumping uglies. How dirty are we before said shower? <laughs> That's... What, what, what the... What? I'm, trying, what? I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, you're, trying to, you're trying to picture someone like me or someone like Jared Dines or Tyler Larson after a mud bath. Is that... I'm not saying I was involved with the mud bath. I'm just saying, you know, how, how dirty are we? So let me think. Fellow YouTuber in terms of, like, the guitar world. Because, wait, guitar yeah. world. Ah, uh, that's easy. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry for Leslie and everyone. It would prop my... Jess Greenberg. She plays guitar. She's a fellow YouTuber. That's my final answer right there. Booyah. It's a hypothetical, Leslie. It's purely hypothetical. Yes, Andrew. Now you. I've got to answer that question. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have to ask my girlfriend to start a YouTube channel pretty damn quickly. <laughs> well, she hasn't yet, so go. Um, uh, uh, uh -huh. why, why is Glenn Fricker the only name that's coming <laughs> into my head? <laughs> I can't think of anyone but Glenn. <laughs> go away. Uh, uh, I'm dying. Uh, 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 <laughs> wow! Can I can I say can I say more than one? I'm just looking at my subscriptions now on YouTube. Mm. Oh my and, god! Uh, my, my... I'm gonna go with Glenn because he really ripped it into me, and I'm just gonna make him stand there and watch me shower. Wow! Okay, that wow. Oh, Steve from Boston. Has got a YouTube channel. 
<laughs> Phil Fry says, "What has who? What? What did what, what did he say? What? I didn't. I didn't say anything. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Leslie, what did he say? <clears throat> Damn it." Oh, well, Bo Boris, Boris just said, for the record, Kiana is actually a YouTuber. Yes, but she's also my friend and my student. Yeah, so that would be inappropriate. That's inappropriate. That. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Um, and there's nothing inappropriate on Henning's channel, so. Absolutely not. Definitely not. Get the thing I didn't get the answer, I give the answer that people wanted. No, but I, I accept Glenn as a really good answer. Um, you see, Chris, oh. Chris... Freaking Chris is actually trying to ask guitar-related questions, which I'm trying to avoid, like the plague. But uh, best guitar choices for an intermediate guitar player at around 500 US or less. It's a good question. It, I mean, it's it's a guitar-related question, but fine then. Lost the stream. Too busy looking at pictures of Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Chris's question? <laughs> for higher up. <clears throat> so. Guitar choice, 500 bucks or less. Me? Um, yeah, I'm going to go, go with a Revstar. From Yamaha. That's a good axe. I only played an expensive one. But that's a good axe. <clears throat> I think if you spend a little bit more than 500, you're going to get a lot more guitar. But the build quality, the, even the... the, the the um, custom hardware and everything on the Revstar stuff is just great. And they're fun colors. Um, they're nice and weighty, but they're not too heavy. Pickups are generally great. Um, and they feel nice. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> what about you? Uh, Ryan Davies says PRSSE, but they are, there's only the standards or something around 500. What, I would, <clears throat> what I would suggest to, uh, to Chris who I know, which is an unfair advantage to me, uh, l does possibly sometimes like surf music and like these nice open chimey sounds, Den Electro XT59. Because ah, that, that thing freaking ruled. I had that here <clears throat> with the two lipsticks in the back, P90 in the front, uh, Wilkinson Tremolo. That guitar was awesome it wasn't like a any any other guitar but that is a guitar to get for someone who likes the chimey kind of sounds um for anyone looking for a an intermediate player looking for like an, an, a guitar you can take seriously i would always say um spend a bit more money and get this nice because that is a serious guitar in this price range ibanez uh, I don't know any model right now where I'd say, yeah, because I haven't had my hands on them. The Ibanez and Zinzins I have here, like that yellow one is a thousand and it's killer. The premium I have is killer. Uh, I've got the seven string for 899. So in the, in the 500 price range, I, I think they have great stuff, but I don't know. This is about 650 or 750. And that is amazing for that, but it's not 500. So, um, yeah, uh, I would say Dan Electro, if you don't need the metal, even though that guitar sounds pretty damn awesome. <clears throat> so, looking at more things here. How does Yamaha pay you money? First Helix, now Revstar. <laughs> that is a good question, Mr. Andrew Harris. That is a good question. That is a very good question, Mr. Andrew Harris. Well, I can, I can guarantee that, oh, I can guarantee that they're not... Yamaha. Go away, Mr. Yamaha. <laughs> I said it twice already. Yeah, you're looking to yep. the left, but they're actually between your legs, aren't they? Well, they were. They're, they're kind of queuing <laughs> up here. Glenn, move over. You've had your turn. Um, no, I, I am not paid by Yamaha. I just happen to own some of their stuff. Uh, you don't play any acoustic? What, me? I play acoustic quite often. I have, <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of acoustics. I did quite a few acoustic songs, numbers, but uh, I, I'm de de demoing them for me. That's not my forte, as they say in Lithuanian. I have to go back on something I said on my channel about the Epiphone Masterbuilt series, actually. 
Someone Thanks. says, finish that damn Les Paul Jr. project. Andrew. He's here as well. Wicked. Where are you? Because you're bugging me all over the internet. I just, I really <laughs> like you as a person, but I feel bad every time you say that. <laughs> Wicked, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, my excuse has been that the weather was too cold to paint it and get outside and sand it. But now the weather's really nice, so I have no excuse. Um, <clears throat> Apart from that, I spend more time chatting with Henning than I do actually doing any guitar playing or building. He does. He uh, uh, Skyped me this morning when I was still in bed with my eyes teary from the from the allergies that are going on right now, uh, my nipples pointing at him. Um, <clears throat> and he's it was, like... It was a 3D show. It was, it was awful. <laughs> my goggles on. Uh, DW Fan Gear says Chapman. I wouldn't know. The Chapmans I held I at Toman were not convincing. But they were at Toman, old strings, and they had issues. Um, 500 bucks for Chapman gets you the lowest tier Chapman. And I simply have no experience with them. The only problem is I can't get experience with them. Because whatever I would do, people would say, I'm bought. I'm afraid of Rob Chapman. Or they have been tampered with before they got to me. If Chapman sends them to me, you guys are going to say, well, they obviously sent you the great ones. If I order them from Toman, they're going to say, well, wow, but Toman saw that you ordered them and they cherry-picked the good ones. And the only way I could possibly do it is give Leslie a couple grand, send them to Toman, buy them with a hat and glasses and a pipe. I somehow imagine her as Sherlock Holmes right now. Um, so Leslie, as Sherlock Holmes, goes into Toman, buys a couple Chapman guitars, so they Why don't... Are you doing that? I, I don't know. As Sherlock Holmes? As Sherlock... I don't know. I, what? By the way, look at this. How stupid is that? Um, and uh, then she comes home with the guitars. That's the only way that people will trust my review when it's very clearly not prepared. Because, yeah, so... They can't possibly send me some. Toman can't send me some. I would have to order them under an, an, uh, a pseudonym. So I don't know. <clears throat> and uh, then someone said, uh, uh, underwear or no underwear? Meaning what? We like to eat it. Uh, are we wearing underwear? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I can't get mine all the way up here. I'll, um, I make myself less of a man. It's nothing to hurt here. So what else do we have? Um, we got, there's a good question. And I've lost it. You got your MR3 Modern from Guitar Center, and it's good. Did, how much setup did you have to do? Because Guitar Center just takes those guitars straight from Indonesia, wherever they're made, and sends them right onto the customer. They don't even check them, according to Phil McKnight, who, tres, who tried it. So um, let us know if you had to do any setup on it. you could only choose three pedals for a gig, which would they be? Uh, the shi... The sh sh Vasquez. Uh, let us know what kind of gig. Metal gig, blues gig, pop gig, salsa, um, merengue, mariachi. I need to know. Does tuna count? Is that, is it, I've heard this question quite often. <clears throat> would you say no. that a tuna counts? No, it does not. Because that's not a pedal. Neither is that. This is a mug. I'm stopping. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, DW Fan Gear says none. He had to do no adjustments. Hey, so where to go, Chapman? Wow. Excellent. Ready to go guitar center. <laughs> Mich Mich Michiel, the bass ba player, says three metal zones. <laughs> that is, of course, the right answer. I answered this question earlier, but I was allowed five, and I chose five big muff pedals of different denominations. Five big muff pedals? Mm. See, I, 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 Leslie, go to the wall and make Andrew a little bit bigger, yeah. and then I'll just turn around like this. Look. I got this recently. Let's do a thing here. I like how you say big muff instead of big muff. Because your, your emphasis is on the muff, not the big. I, I always generally emphasize the muff. <laughs> Look at that. Who wouldn't? 
Whoa, is that a, like an original old Russian something? It is. It's the big, I can't say it right now, the big muff. It's the big muff. It's the big muff. And I, I try and size both of them. Yeah, look at that. I am so excited that I have this. It's got a button like on the tank. Where'd you get that? Is that an original? <clears throat> yeah. Lick it. Does it taste like, like old, say, old Russia? That is, that is definitely Russian. <laughs> Circa, I'm gonna go early 90s. Justin says, don't um, overemphasize the muff. And, and TJ, I'm sorry, I have a big muff. She's at work, she's at work at the moment. <laughs> oh, we had to go there, of course, we had to go there. Wow. Yeah, I'm very excited to have that. Um, can I answer the question about the pedals? Yeah, go ahead. Right wait, did we did we find wait? Did we find out for what kind of gig? Ah. Uh, I have no experience with the Simbotech distortion pedal. Sorry, nothing wrong with five big mouths. We'll do. We don't need anything else in the metal ah, zone. Up all this. EQ pedal. Salsa, haha. -ha. So what? What style? Yeah, very hairy pedal, Justin. So... Monk <clears throat> in Dutch means even stinky. Um, go ahead. For, for the style of music you play, which is? Uh, rock? Blues? Question mark. You don't know. You have no something, idea. Something with a pentatonic scale in it. <laughs> okay, so what would you take? Um... I would take a Big Muff. Really? Yes, but not the the Big Muff Pi because it just gets lost. I would because I it's my go to pedal. I just love it. I don't even care if it's appropriate tone. I just push it and on it goes. I would go for some kind no re reverbs in the amp, right? Let's say yeah, reverbs reverb. in the amp, yeah. Um, I would go for a wah pedal so that I can just look better than I sound. I would go... A big muff for... and a wah? Okay. <clears throat> I, I, I'm quite stuck in that. At the moment, this is going to change next week. And the third pedal would probably be... Um, uh, uh, for fun, I want to say a whammy pedal, but I'm, it's absolutely useless for me. A big muff, a wah, and a whammy. That would be... What kind of music do you play? What the fuck? I'll let you know. I'll, I'll plug it in in a minute. No, I'd probably use... Um, I quite like the, the gonculator at the moment. But set if, just we, if we ever get a chance to make videos where we actually sit together and play, um, that'll be interesting. Well, that'll be a different answer. You asked me what pedals would I take to the gig, you know? Yeah, but... But then, what kind of stuff you play with that? With those kinds of okay. pedals, I'm thinking. Well, then let's go. Let's go with something useful. I would go with possibly <laughs> um, the Marvel Drive from Ramble FX because I love how martially it sounds. I would go with some sort of compressor. I really like the yellow one from Moore. And I would go with um, a Russian big muff. Still going to be a big muff from there. What, what, what I think we use quite a lot of tones with that. This is a, Leslie is now completely just erasing me. Um, could you please, Leslie? Hello. No, no, that that's too much, I'm Andrew. Big. That is too much, Andrew. That's what she said. Damn it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, three pedals I would take. Definitely Strymon Dig. No question about that. Oh, nice. Because that can be reverby. It can be It can be everything. It can be uh, slapbacky. It can be super pads. It can be many things. Um, I would take a Strymon Dicko. Uh -huh. Because a Strymon Dicko... The Strymon Deco is two tape machines. 
And what you can do with tape machines, you can drive them. So on this side, you have tape saturation, which is a really nice, slightly fuzzy, without actually being a fuzz, but like a very clony, fuzzy kind of drive. It's great. It's digital, but it sounds fantastic. And you can delay the second tape in reference to the first tape. And by doing that and wobbling the tape speed of the second delay, you have doubling sounds. And the further you delay it, you're getting into phasing, flanging, chorusing, up to delay. So this, by just taking two tapes and changing their speed relative, relative to each other, um, you have modulation and tape delay. And you have drive. And then I have the dig for the digital delays and reverby kind of things. Uh, that means I just need a drive. I need a flexible drive. Big mouth. Oh my god. Um, if I want a flexible drive, or just one drive that I really, really, really like. Someone said Big Muff, but no, I'm talking about a drive, not a thing that makes a guitar sound like shit. Um, um, Metal Zone? Not a metal zone. God damn it. What about... What kind of drive you looking for? Bluesy or something That's the more? thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, on my albums, I do prog metal. But my feeling would be I'm going to take my McMull Strat and those pedals and I go do poppy stuff. So I would probably take the Warhorn <clears throat> from Walrus. Is, uh, somewhere here. Here. <clears throat> Walrus Warhorn. It's uh, an overdrive. Which, of course, if my amp has some drive, I can push it with that. But uh, you should definitely check into the Deco. Highly underestimated pedal. Because you have to understand what it does. Once you understand that it's two tape machines and the second one is slowed down in relation to the first, it's insane. We missed a lot of uh, comments here. Let's see. Yeah, you were you were sensibly answering a question. I, I'm totally unprepared for that. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, penis. Um, it's a good point that Justin has. 160 people watching and 35 likes. Apparently, they watch, but they don't like. They don't like. I have to admit, I rarely hit the thumbs up button. And I don't know why. It's so easy. It's also ultra easy to go to The Guitar Geek on YouTube and hit subscribe because, wait, because last time I checked, it absolutely didn't cost shit. It also, well, it, you never have to watch any of the videos if you subscribe. No, I mean, no, don't watch the videos. No. Actually, the thing is, I don't want subscribers that don't watch because it's not, I mean, just subscribe to something you're interested in and that you want to watch. I mean... It wouldn't help me if someone super awesome like, I don't know, Andrew, um, gives me a shout out and I get all of, the, all of the subscribers because they want to do him a favor and then they never watch. What's the point of that? There are quite, a few, quite some channels that did some stuff for bigger channels, got 100,000 subs more, and then they don't matter because those people never watch. <coughs> so I like, I love my viewers because, you know, they came over mm. time. Glenn. Because you earned, you earned them. And we've spoken about this before. Yeah, Glenn did, did give me quite a few of his friends. Um, however, I have a feeling that they came, they looked, they did Glenn a favor, but then they stayed. I know Michelle, for example, came because Glenn sent him over, and um, now he's like a bad cold. <laughs> you love it. That's what I'm trying to say. A bad, you love a bad cold. <laughs> I, I, I can't think of a better thing to have. Uh, Studio Shimio, if you want a bass channel with content that absolutely matters for bass, watch that. What bass channel doesn't give you uh, all these like, you know, all that stuff, but actually shows you bass lines from Eminem songs? I mean, or like uh, unravels the, I want to say Andalusian. Cadence. Is that is that what it is, Andrew? Did I say that right? 
I'm sat and watching the live stream of you going, and it's amazingly entertaining without any sound on it. Um, <coughs> sorry, Michelle, I, I can't answer that question. I, I haven't seen that video. So the point is, he does great content. We, but it's we, useful stuff, isn't it? It's, it's not totally useful really stuff. Studio Shimil, we still have to get the guy some kind of baffles for his room because there's too much reverb, but that's an easy fix. What you can fix is the guy in front of the camera, which in his case really doesn't have to be fixed. In Andrew, in my case, we're working on it. I just want to say that Caveman has subscribed to my channel now, and um, I'm very happy to have someone called Caveman subscribing to my channel, so thank you, Caveman. That's how you do it. Um, but... Uh, I want to answer this. Single ply versus double ply toilet paper. The important question. <laughs> who, 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 who? Who? I don't want to. I don't want to show off, um, Chris. But I've got triple ply. Boom. Wow. Yeah. Living it up. There's your answer. But uh, that's uh, that's going to change to single ply next week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, um, <laughs> oh man, oh, don't bring it down. Um, thoughts on the DNM drive. It, it's great. For me, my first reaction was like, hmm, I expected it to be super warm and round. And it is a little bit on the harsher side. So you have to take the, the, uh, the, the top down. Um, it's a killer pedal. But um, that's, do you, you want to go there about what you just said? Because I think we kind of should. Yeah, we can go there. Yeah. Uh, you, you go there. Because right? and, and Andrew, you know, called me up this morning was like, dude, you know, they just fired me. And it's not like he has a position where you would expect such a thing. You're what? A kindergarten teacher, right? I was, yeah. And uh, apparently you're too edgy for the system because you have kids and a girlfriend, and no ring on your finger. And that apparently is a problem in the area that you live in. We think. They, of they officially I, can't say that. I can not neither confirm nor deny that. So officially, no comment. Yeah, but that's well, pretty it, much... That. Well, I, what is true What is true is that I have no income, no steady income as of, well, today, really. Um, and your channel wild. is about at 5,000-something subs? It's close to six thousand. Oh, hello! So, <laughs> <laughs> trust me, as a as a as a YouTuber who is is trying to make his living with it and at the moment succeeding. Thank you, people. Um, it's 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 tough. You constantly have to you know try to get gear and have to convince companies to uh, to pay you for it, and still be honest, which is of course the thing that we we try to uh, try to be, and uh, it, that's a tough sale. And now. If I go to a company, that's easier now. I got 70,000 people watching me. That's amazing. Uh, for Andrew, this is going to be a tough sale. Now, if I say I want a couple hundred bucks, which is literally nothing for a video, uh, that is something I can get from companies now. If I do enough of them per month, that's fine. If Andrew asks for the same kind of money I do, they might say, well, yeah, wait a second, but we can go to Henning and he's got 70,000 subs. So his only chance is either to do products someone else reviews because no one wants them, that's one, one thing. Uh, it, but pretty much just work for free to get the channel up to where it is. In his situation right now, that's a tough thing to do, not having any income for yeah. him, him and his 17 kids. Why did you have 17 kids? Well, after the first two, it just sort of got more interesting. It was kind of a, <laughs> a bet, really, you know. Oh, it's two people. It's two. I have to say that because now someone actually who just jumped in thinks you have seventeen kids, and they're thinking, "What's wrong I with this person?" I have two children, and they're awesome, and I want them to continue living and eating and doing all that stuff and, and being clothed and all that. Thing. It's like us with the dogs, only that we don't clothe them. Um, do they you also don't clothe your dogs? No, but we give them vitamins and flubigol. Which is like Yopi, the old one. He gets a half a Floby Gold tablet in the morning and in the evening, which is something about his eye not falling out. I don't understand what Leslie does with him. I don't know. Um, oh. It's I don't know. Or it could be for the kidneys. Is it kidneys, Leslie? No. no. What is it? Thyroid glands. Thyroid glands. 
Floby goal for the thyroids. I don't know. It's, you know, all that stuff needs to be paid for. So um, what are your kids' names, if, if I might uh, ask? You might. My son, who is coming up to a year old, is called Noah. And my daughter, who's coming up to three years old, is called Evelina. Evelina. Yeah, with an A, which people ask me often. With an A? Even wait, though you're hearing e this... Wait, 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 wait. Evelina, but A at the beginning? A at the... A, no, A at the end. I yeah, have of to course. Backstory, I have to backstory this. You're hearing this rather stunning, charismatic British accent. But I live in <laughs> yeah. Austria. <laughs> yes. I live in Austria, and Evelina is the, is the name that people hear, even though I say Evelina. And so they say, with an E, and I say, yeah, with an E. But then at the end, no, an A at the and then they do what you just did. An A at the end, Evelina? Yes. Yeah. Evelina, that's a, that's a name I know. If you keep saying it, she's going to run through that door any minute now and say, what? Because that's what she does at the moment. <laughs> Wait, let's, let's try this. Evelyn, Evelina, hello, kitty, come here. No, that's, that's, she's not a cat, right? No. <laughs> and I wait a minute, it's, it's half, half past six here, yeah, she'll be watching TV now. Um, but you're going to call her Evie anyway, right? I haven't thought about it. And, and your son's name is Miller? Noah. Noah? Why did I think Miller? Noah? The Nomeister. The Nomeister. I like that. The no man. And no. as a father, I can quite happily say he is a machine. <laughs> One year old. Um, no, I'm proud of that boy. Uh, my shirt, Pete, is not made by Hans Riegel. My shirt is made by uh, Mr. Gugu in Poland. MrGugu.com. Shirts no one needs, but everyone wants. I'm not getting paid for this. And I literally buy all of them for way too much money because these things are expensive. But look how beautiful. I want to eat me. Um, so, what you guys should be doing. What is hugs for uh -huh. Henning? What in the world? Chris, is, Chris, wait, wait, Chris, wait, wait. <laughs> True Tom spends five bucks. Hashtag hugs for Henning. How does this work? Do we split that as 250 each? Or do you keep, are we on your channel and you keep it all? Yeah, you'll I get mean, 250, of course. Get in. Buy a sandwich. Um, Chris is asking again musical questions. Fine. Otherwise he cries. Sitting all the way there in the Philippines. Chase Bliss pedal. Best Chase Bliss audio pedal for musical application. Uh, I've had three of them so far. I have the Tonal Recall analog pedal, the red mod knob. I have the chorus slash vibrato, which is called the uh, warp vinyl hi-fi. And I have the new one, the condor. I have not turned the condor on. I think it can do amazing things. I shall find out once I turn it on. Uh, warp vinyl is an amazing chorus, but how often do you need wee 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 um, The tonal recall is my go-to analog delay. It's phenomenal pads, anything you want to do with an analog delay, it's killer. Absolutely. So that one. Can anyone give Andrew a sandwich, please? So the point is, please support Andrew's channel, watch his content, and if that's good, support his channel. Exactly. Um, he's got a patron, and he's got kids. Does your girlfriend eat as well? Sometimes. Okay. Um, apparently. Apparently. Hey, Leslie, can you make Andrew my parrot? Come on, come I on. I haven't got a parrot, I've got a Deadpool. Look, I have a Deadpool. I'm topical. It doesn't, doesn't work. You have to move over, Andrew, to be my parrot. Yeah, well, here? To your right, to your right, to your right, further to your right. Further to your right, there you go. And it, does, it doesn't really work, yeah. Go, no, it's not really happening. It's not very parody. We're not doing a good parody. Ah, okay. Moving oh. back, moving back, Leslie. Oh, dear. Uh, Mich oh. Michelle is uh, uh, doing a super chat for six euros, saying this should be a three-way split with Leslie. So, Leslie, two bucks for you. Woo! And if for some reason, Boris is doing hugs for Henning. Why, why hugs for Henning? <laughs> 
um, will you get the new Mark Tremonti amp? Uh, I'm hoping I can, can convince PRS to send me one. Been talking to PRS for quite a while to do videos. Trust me, quite a while. Um, and uh, I know the right people, so hopefully I'll, I'll do a review for it. The price point is amazing, and people that played it said it's awesome. My only problem, problem with it is uh, it's clearly an amp for the masses. It's clearly not an amp that Tremonti actually plays. Uh, they wanted to do something that can sell well, so it's an amp for 549 bucks that says Tremonti on it that gets close to his sounds. Uh, something that he doesn't play live, for me, is not a signature amp. Because Tremonti will only play loud-ass amps. He clearly said anything under 40 watts he's not going to take on stage. So what kind of a signature amp is an amp that the signature artist does not actually use in a live situation? That doesn't really make sense to me. Even though it might be a sound and he worked on it and he, he signed off on it. I don't get that. Why didn't they just make a 50 watt, 100 watt version and then release the 15 watt version as a more affordable spin-off of that? But only doing the 15 watt version when it's clear that he doesn't use that. Yeah, he used it in the studio, they say, but I don't know about that. And what do you think, Andrew? You're absolutely right. It's not a signature amp. It's just a money-making exercise. It, exactly. It's not going to use it. They looked at the market. They said 15-watt lunchbox amps for 550 bucks can sell. If it says MT on it, it's going to sell like crazy. If it sounds good, it can sell like crazy. And it probably does. And I've got no problem with that. It's probably a pretty damn good amp for the money. But I don't think it is a real signature amp if... I mean, let me put it this way. If... Who, who, who just... 10 bucks for lazy robot who is a, a frequenter on my channel um, well, well then that's your money i guess no 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 we're splitting this three ways that's 333 for leslie right there <laughs> i was just gonna read your comment by the way because i thought it's funny and then i saw it's from you um are we, are we now commenting on my comment this is this is commentception uh, uh, Matt Buckland. Do we know him? Do we know Matt? The name sounds. Say, it yes. sounds familiar. Sounds like. Sounds like I. We can't say why it sounds familiar. Wait. <laughs> why? Why are we doing this all day long? Um. Where is the, pay can, where is the payment for actual money. guitar gear amp questions? Well, Chris, it's got to come from you, I guess. <laughs> because no one actually wants real questions. Hey, come on, we're talking about gear quite a bit. We yeah. are. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, Tremonti said he used it in the studio. Realistically, are we to believe that? He might. It might be amazing and he might have used it in the studio. If he used it in the studio, why doesn't he use it live? That makes absolutely no sense. Because if it's not loud enough, well, why didn't he just tell them, make me a louder amp? Um, if it doesn't push his 412s hard enough, you can, take, you can take it and you can blow it up with extra power amps, not a problem. Why use his rectifiers or whatever he uses live when this is his amp? Um, that's my only thing about it. So, yeah, I used it in the studio. So I'm just reading the comments. Lazy robots. Andrew, I've tried to donate directly via PayPal, but they have stopped my account as they think I am laundering money. It might be true. <laughs> Speak to my lawyer. I will. Send me your lawyer's details. I have plenty of free time on my hands now. The Norwegian Blue, what's, uh, what's wrong with it? <laughs> it's dead. That's what's wrong with it. It's bloody dead. It's pushing up the daisies. <laughs> no, no. Just pointing! <laughs> pointing! <laughs> Someone just did five bucks to see five the Norwegian bucks. Blue. To get you to do a Monty Python impression. Yeah. And Leslie sitting in there has no idea what we're talking about. I, I said, hey, Leslie, can we watch Flying Circus? Because it's on Netflix now. She's like, fuck no! I don't want to see that crap. Which is literally what she said. No. Yeah. Oh, Leslie, you've gone. Oh. And, I, and I still love her so much. Spining's pushing up the daisies. It's joined the choir invisible. 
For the fjords! Oh my god. More sandwiches. Good luck, both of you. Gotta run. Thank you, lazy robot. You are um, you, a man. true gentleman. Lemon <laughs> curry! <laughs> and, oh, thank you, Paul. Um, uh, no, Paul. Paul Fletcher is a friend of mine. He represented me at the guitar show in Birmingham. He went around wearing a Guitar Geek t-shirt, throwing <laughs> business cards at people. That's the way to do that. So and guys, he wanted me for you to give him a shout-out. Because Glenn gave him a shout-out and told him to fuck off. On video, uh, so maybe you want to give him a shout out to Fletch. Well, thank you, Paul Fletcher, the the the, the Fletchmeister. Right, we forgot this is an ex parrot. It was nailed down. <laughs> um, the thing is, we if, should get together sometime and, and redo that sketch. Yes. Oh, actually, we really should. Where do we get a stuffed Norwegian blue? Norway. Let's talk to Leo. Leo, do you have a, Can you find a blue parrot in Norway and stuff it for Let's, us? let's stuff Leo. <laughs> let's stuff Leo. Hey, blue. Hey. <laughs> Here's the thing, Andrew. If I played that sketch for Leslie now, she would sit there like this. It's not funny. This is stupid. What's funny about that? That poor parrot. That that would be her reaction. She doesn't get Monty Python. Sorry, we're moving there. Sorry. What? What? Trying, trying really hard then. <laughs> um, can I have an argument? Can I have an <laughs> argument? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to have an argument. Yeah, we're done. That was five minutes. No, it wasn't. I guess it was. <laughs> oh, wow, so good. He's gone to, he's gone to meet his maker. Oh, <laughs> right, I know what I'm doing when I've when I've signed off from this. Mm. Wow. What is the, this, this Norwegian blue you speak of? I'm intrigued. It's a parrot. It's a very famous Norwegian parrot that flies around there everywhere, obviously. Please watch the parrot sketch from Monty Python, and then you know. My nipples explode with delight. A lot of Python fans here, which explains why they watch my channel. Does yeah? Because that's ingrained in me, and it's probably oozing out of my pores subtly. <laughs> Where the people say "ni," we're now the people that say "icky icky icky patang." <laughs> patang, patang. <laughs> we just uh, turned on a, a, a holy grail to like fall asleep the other night, and Leslie's like, "What the? This is stupid!" And then she fell asleep, and I was I was still watching it. It's like a sparrow brought I, I was, um, I was amazed to find that here in Austria it's extremely popular. My overcraft is full of eels. <laughs> it, it seems such a British thing, and then for it to, to transcend the language is amazing. There's a gear question. Where? Where? What do you think of the Rev Dynamis? Dynamis. 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 Uh, Dynamis. Well, it just keeps scrolling down. I can't see it. Uh, we have a couple more minutes before Leslie has to give the cat a shot. Um, wait a second. What? Right, he's gone. He's gone. Let's um, let's book him. Rev Dynamis. Um, it is. Let's let's actually turn something on here. So hypothetically, I can actually just pump this into the feed. And yes, this is a McMull Telly. A tea classic and it's just so good. Um I played that one. It's very nice. <clears throat> Technically you guys should be able to hear that. Um, I'm hearing that. So that's true. Ah no, it's muted. Here we go. Now it's actually going into the feed. A Little Britain's pretty awesome too. Now Leslie actually will have to do stuff because we have guitar cams and shit. Um, so here's the Rave Dynamis. And that's actually the reverb from the Dynamis. Wait.
wait, I'm gonna have to. Uh, let's see. I, I'm, 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 I'm on it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Is that good or not? Good. Now the amazing thing is that of course you can go to channel two here. <coughs> game one on that channel so we can push it two more times and one more time This amp is, uh, the word is brilliant. See, see how it cleans up, come on! How, how much of that is guitar and how much of that is amp? You know, what, what's the ratio there, do you think? That is sadly a very good question. Um, I, my keyboard just gave up the ghost and I've had a question about uh, the, well, the headstock. Can we talk about the ugly headstock on the Macmore? No, we can't, um, because you played for a minute and then you don't care. It's not ugly. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. So, going from a guitar for 4,200 euro to a guitar for 349. And no, no one please ask me about this. By the way, in my video where I said that we can't do the, uh, the Purple Heart because it's too soft, it's wrong. Purple Heart is too hard. So I was completely wrong. So I mean, been joined by Phil McKnight, I think. We are. Where's Wilson? Phil! Are you here? You should sound You should what? I, 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 I have sound to... me one of the prototypes. <laughs> uh, hey, Phil, Phil, we can talk about that. We should talk about that. You can give me one. Uh, how do you, how do, what did my grandpa always say? Oh, fuck off, yeah. Um, so, yeah, does the McMull sound better? But I mean... Honestly, 
see if I can... That's still pretty damn start... awesome. Sorry, when you started out, I thought it didn't sound good, but now you've managed to dial it in, it sounds brilliant. You mean with that guitar? Yeah. Or in general? No, but the Mac Mall sounded great, with no questions. But with yeah, well, that, that... One, the first kind of... The... Then once you dial it in, it, it doesn't sound... I don't want to say it doesn't sound that different, but it's certainly in the same ballpark. I mean... When people say, why are the Mac Malls so expensive, there is a difference. I mean, this is nice. Oh, the, this is gr the amp is brilliant. But if I now go this... Quick change. Quick change. Obviously, this should make a difference. are good there's no question about it these are very good this or the t classic paired with this amp will cover pretty much everything other than brutal metal i literally anything and then the, the rev is two thousand bucks which for what it is is absolutely not too much money comes with an amazing foot switch that's programmable um I, I'll, I'll never look, I mean, okay, that's, that's wrong. I'll never look for another Strat, that's, that's a dirty, stinking lie. Um, what do you want? But <laughs> we always need more guitars, come on. Um, but this is, for me, the ultimate vintage uh, Strat. And the, um, the tally is just brilliant. Brilliant. It is slightly heavier than the very expensive models, and it's a two-piece body. Other than that, it's, you know, same, same deal. But this in the clean sound. <laughs> How many presets on the amp? Six of them, if you want that. And Jesse's like, hitting the headstock. Ugh. Here's a question. Why? That's what I want to know. Why is the headstock O? It's because what we know. If I show you Fender headstock, that's not a beautiful shape. That's not like, oh, how amazing. That's a triangle with a blob on it. It's just what we know. It's what we're used to from Maya and uh, those other people that play strats. <laughs> Clapton and all these people. It's just what we're used to. Why? How is this uglier than a triangle with a blob on it, or an Ibanez, or whatever? I absolutely, from here, I can't even tell. And uh, Andrew, that's, you pl that's the one from the Messer, no? Yeah, Frankfurt. you played those I sat in Frankfurt, down and I right? Played that. that was the first one I played, and. I was so overcome by the look of the booth and the sounds that were coming out of there, I didn't even notice the headstock until I was playing it. And I looked down and thought, that's different, don't care. It, it, it doesn't matter. When that's hanging on your wall, every time you walk up to your wall to take that off the wall, the last thing you're ever gonna think about is like, ooh, that headstock. You're gonna anticipate this feeling. <laughs> feeling of complete control over dynamics, the feeling of being able to spank the shit out of a single note. That it's an amazingly responsive guitar. And it's green. I want to try that guitar through my Honey Boy amp over here, which is the most dynamic amp I've played in a long time. But that one there. 
And I, I want to know if that's too dynamic. We're going to get like, you know, just. So what you what you're saying in. is you want me to send that to Austria for a while. How long's a while? How long is this right now? Can you see how long that is? A couple of inches. That's what she said. Yep. Israel brand, right? Yes, it is from Israel. Um, what else do we have? We gotta, we gotta stop this, unless, of course, we want to continue this, unless he just runs away and then she doesn't really do too much switching anyway here because she's probably like, "Why do you need me for this?" Right, babe? What? Ah, oh, that's right. Emma's students coming, so we can't really. Uh, Continue this. Sandra has just ordered a PRS Silver Sky from Tillman. Ooh. And he hopes it arrives tomorrow in one piece. Have any of you either, have either of you ever had an expensive guitar broken in shipping? Nope. Yeah. <clears throat> not expensive, but I've had guitars broken. But on used guitars sent by idiots who don't know how to package a guitar. A Tillman sends it in the case that it comes in, which is in a cardboard box, which is in a padded cardboard box. So no, nothing's gonna happen. A PRS sent me a guitar, and UPS actually just put that on my door. I wasn't home, so they literally just leaned it on the front door, which is 10 meters away from the main street. So there was a four and a half thousand dollar guitar sitting right there on the street. So yeah. Um, I had the same thing, but with seven Harley Bentons. I came home after being on holiday for 10 days, and there were seven Harley Benton acoustic guitars lined up, and they'd been there for a week. So that's the nice place that Did I'm you in. buy seven Harley Benton acoustics? I had seven students. I thought you reviewed them or something. I did. I, I sort of set them up against each other because they were brilliant for the fifty-nine euros. That they oh, that's cost. okay. That's ridiculous. Yeah, those are those are great. For, I'm for, not comparing for... that to a four grand guitar, but no. the point is, I live somewhere quite nice. So, um, <clears throat> let's. Uh, any you know in the reading room, mom, are you going to explain the difference between it and the Fender Tally? Okay, we'll do this. We have five more minutes before Leslie has to run. Um, what makes it so much better? That's difficult to say. What makes this so much better than a Fender? Well, let's do this. Can you hear it? Let's start there, okay? Let's do neck pickup. bit out of tune. Let's see, can you make uh, Andrew a little bit smaller? I'm hearing that the Fender sounds good. There's no question. It's a that. great guitar for the money, no question. But the the Macmillan, you can hear the individual notes that you're playing. You can hear them ringing through the, the telly. It kind of becomes one sound. Yeah. The, the Fender telly. That that chord especially. Um, and um, exactly, it 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 blends more. Um, it feels less present. Yeah. 
move mush. Yeah. It just feels as if with McMahon you play and it feels like the sound is right there. Every note, every nuance is there. And here I'm playing and I'm all of a sudden trying to dig into the sound with my ears and finding the nuances. Yeah. Um, this is a great guitar for 1500 bucks with a killer case. But also dynamics. I'm really digging in now. Okay, moving back. Throwing these on the floor, don't do this. Do, do not like I do. Relax. The guitar itself compresses a lot more. But Alan has a good question. Is yeah. it $3,000 better? Depends on what you do. Leslie, if you need to go, that's cool. Can't, can't hear what she's saying. What do you say? Okay, good. See you in a bit, babe. Um, bye. And she said bye. Oh, I'm growing on the screen. But I don't have that stick. I can't do that. She has to. She's got control over the stick. With regards to the three grand question, yeah. is it three grand more? And to it, expand on your answer, it depends what you do. If I had to have one guitar, then I would absolutely, because it's it means a little bit more. I'd be happy with the Fender, but now I've heard the Mac more. And it's like dating a six and being really, really happy, and then meeting an eight who's interested. And, <laughs> That's a and horrible then, analogy, but it's completely right. And then finally finding a 10. Um, upstairs. Upstairs. <laughs> she, he, he said, close. Um, if I had never played this and never used it in context, uh, let me put it this way with my modern eagle, with my PIS. Um, I was like, who needs a 6,000 euro guitar? That's ridiculous. Once I got that and I played metal with it and the most beautiful clean stuff and country-ish things in pop and it did all these things I realized if I didn't have it I would absolutely I didn't spend six thousand bucks on it uh, back in the days in 2009 I got an, an artist deal from them um, but I would absolutely spend the money because that guitar allowed me to get to the recordings that I always dreamed of in the recording it delivered what I always dreamed of being as a guitar player it gave me the articulation, the clarity, the flexibility. And when I, when I play this badly, and I actually didn't play it badly, fuck yeah! I feel like, oh my God, maybe I could do some. Maybe I could play country if I really put my mind to it. This gives me the feeling that those things are possible. Whereas with this really great American pro telly, it's an estimation of what we strive to sound like. Is, does that make sense? It's, yeah. a, it's a great guitar, and if you put that in a recording, this thing, the, the Fender, no one's ever gonna say it sounds shitty. But if you go for these two notes a la John Mayer, that just make you melt. That is something I can do with those Mac Mulls, um, that a lesser guitar wouldn't necessarily do it. Someone here is comparing the Mac Mull, saying they definitely go for that price for a Fender custom shop. Just, be, just, like because, be just because it says Fender on it. Exactly, you're paying, you're, what you're paying for the Mac Mull is a guitar. Um, Not what the you're name. paying for the Fender custom shop is, is the Fender custom shop. Fender custom shop guitars are great, there's no question about it. If Fender did what McMull does on that level, we're talking about 15 grand. Because McMull is using 70 year old wood. Resonance matches the body and the uh, neck. They do specific pickups for those resonances of that guitar. Uh, with what Fender is, uh, what McMull is doing, 
Fender would call it the original Wood series. It would be highly limited, and they original Wood. Yeah, I, can't, I, I get it. Um, and they would charge you fifteen grand for it. The reason yeah. why McMull is only six and a half thousand is because it doesn't say Fender on it. If you are after tone, you're getting the full experience. Um, pickup difference. Well, someone's asked, how could they um, mod, say, a Harley Benton to sound more in the area of that Mac mode? Would it be hardware? Would it be pickups? I've lost the, the comment. It would be wood. Yeah. It's quite simply, you'd have to change everything. It, uh, but to get, but if you did want to get a better sound, then I would suggest first changing the pickups and the electrics and the tuners, probably. Definitely on these, the tuners are a... A problem they are I don't know what they are they look weird and they're not super reliable let's do the same thing mm. with uh, a American Pro Strat which for the money with the case the build quality everything on it this is a good guitar for 1500 I, I love that gray color no one would dare to do gray and Fender did a good job here this is a good tool. This is a thing, this is a guitar that gets you there. This is a guitar that does the job. No question about it. It doesn't flash you, I think, but it does everything a Strat's supposed to do. And this. That, that's why you want this. Yeah. They are minute differences. I had Thomas Blue here. And um, Thomas Blue is the Strat knowledger. He knowledges about Strats. He's ridiculous. And he has several 61, 62, 60 something Strats. I don't know about these things. He brought his original 62, I think. And it was grimy. It was literally. No vintage relic guitar feels like what I was playing there. It actually was an old beat ass guitar. But he played this and he said, yep, they're doing it right. This is. Even in terms of playability, he said, he said it beats his. Um, he says, sound, everything is good. He actually looked at this, and actually on, on, on old vintage strats, apparently the distance between the distance here and the distance there is different. And they did this here slightly, but not as much as they would as on an actual older guitar. Um, so... Um, if Thomas, Thomas Bluke plays this thing and says, that's the real deal, then it's the real deal. Fender has a lot more expression. It, it, I'm sorry, but you can't possibly say this in a live stream. Mm. It's it just, it, you can't. You have to play these. And anyone who plays them, it's like, okay, I get it. I walked into Frankfurt Music Messer, and I heard that, and I just... I just lost my my sense of being. This sort of found myself the next second in the booth. I was lost. And the guy uh, Levi was a monster player. He was awesome. But it wasn't just him. You know, it was it was the guitar. It's and... uh, it, with the, you have to be. It's got to be the player. It's got to be the amp. It's got to be everything. Jan, who just arrived, my student. We're doing a live stream, by the way, Jan. I'll I'll kick these hey, people oh, off. Yeah. It's it's just 151 people that. I'm going to kick off. 
what what does he go for? He goes for Murple as long as he's still there. But usually last last week he he grabbed this because when you come in and get your guitar lessons, you just grab whatever you want. Yeah, he's pretty you know, cool. And why not just grab the most expensive things you can possibly <laughs> grab? Um. So uh, and now blindfolded. It's a good point. Blindfolded listening or blindfolded playing? Because playing this, no other guitar of mine can do. Oh. I just wrote this. That it's was good. beautiful. That it's was... good, right? Yeah. You like? Yes. Traditional sounding. <laughs> so. Uh, th this is an endless argument with a guitar in that price range. People are going to argue, is it worth it? And the answer is, just as Mac will say themselves, play the guitar and decide for yourself. Because I did. And I suddenly realized that I needed to uh, raise that money. Then I lost my freaking job. So, yes. Yeah, so no uh, Mac Mall for you in the future. No Mac Mall for me. Who knows? Nothing. Maybe maybe at some point. So people, we're gonna sign off. Please subscribe to uh, Andrew's channel, and um, if you like what if he does, you like if you like yeah. it, but and, and if you like what he does, go to Patreon. A buck a month doesn't hurt anyone. It literally doesn't. And if and if if a fifth, if a sixth of his people would do a buck a month, which literally doesn't hurt anyone, because they you like his content and you wanna say well. Fuck free, you know. I'll pay you a buck a month. Uh, you know, he could pay his rent and get his kids a sandwich. Well, I've just been gone up to forty nine dollars per month. That's brilliant. That is awesome. That, that is, th and you know what? Forty nine dollars a month is a couple sandwiches. Yeah. Anything that's... helps. We are trying to bring you great content, and um, Andrew's content is uh, killer. So you know, throw him a bone, support him. If what he does is great, not just because I say it and he's my buddy, that, you know, he's got to deliver and he's got to continuously deliver. So. That's important. And be funny, which for him is uh, not a stretch. Not just look need. at him. It's just the looking at him is all you need. <laughs> We're going to play some uh, something like. Because we're doing that and all the little. All the little fills. All the little details, that's what we're doing. Jan is my last student. I gave up all the students, but uh, I kept him. Don't ask me why. I have no, no idea. He so, must be a very patient guy. <laughs> he is a patient guy. Um, Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I've had a really good time. Um, so thank you, everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't follow all the, 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 the things. I'm going to see if uh, I can upload this in... Glorious 4K, but I think the SD card probably has said at some point, like, ah, I'm done. Thank you. That's it. Um, but if not, I'll re-upload this in in pretty. Because his his face, come on. His, come on. You, you gotta, gotta see this in, in this. And thank you guys for watching. We'll do these live streams on a regular basis. Now that I figured out how to do the picture in picture with the Skype and you can actually hear everything and we can actually pump the guitar through everything and we have multi-camera. We can we can do some cool stuff and invite some people. Maybe get Andrew here, but he'd have to come up here and uh, cost money and his family's going to be like, oh, my daddy, we don't, we, we don't want to be responsible for kids crying. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, it was a pleasure to have you. And that's Thank you very much. fully sincere from the bottom of my gummy bear. And from the heart of my bottom. Crikey. <laughs> I might, I might. Okay, people. Um, auf Wiedersehen. Bye-bye. Bye, Kim's Workshop. Thank you so much. You guys are absolutely the best, and you know it. Because without you, we wouldn't be here. I would be, I would be in the salt mines somewhere. I don't know where the next salt mines are, but I have to drive there and mine salt. Right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's not a good job. I'd rather go... That's Plinky, plunky, plunky, and then get paid for that. It's a little bit more than that. So, thank you. We're signing off. Um, 
I'm gonna say animals at the end because if I actually get to edit this, then animals at the end will be at the end. You have the last word, Mr. Ferris. Sandwich. <laughs> Thank you.